Welcome back again to Cinema Central. I'm your host, DJ Ace, and naturally, I went and saw Avengers Endgame Thursday, the 25th, first show, 6 o'clock, but I didn't do it by myself because I'm here with the one and only Matt Triola. How's it going, guys? Oh, yeah, so Matt's here. We saw it together, first show, and we're going to talk a little about what that whole process is, but first, what you need to know is that this recording is actually double special because we're doing double the effort double the workload oh yes we are yeah so not only is this podcast going to be on cinema central as usual but you can also find on matt's channel yeah so my ch my youtube channel is matthew triola simple as that i review movies and i do film related stuff and photography related stuff so if you're into that kind of stuff then you might want to check out my channel and so yes this is also going to be a review but it's going to be recorded yeah with actual moving picture and if you're seeing this on matt's channel podcast cinema central on google and itunes there we go. All right. So, first of all, no spoilers yet, but there will be later. So, I think we just need to discuss like the preparation we went to this film. So, yes. Yeah. We do. Yeah. How about I want to tell from two different perspectives. Yeah. I think that might be kind of interesting. It. Do it. Do it. So, well, well, I'll tell my perspective and then you can tell yours because yeah, I think it'd be funny. funny that way. I think it'd be much much funnier. Yeah, so I'm casually hanging out at my house, you know, I just graduated, I'm looking for jobs, but you know, you're kind of still hanging out, you know, you don't have as much pressure on you. Then I get a text from Aaron here, and he's like, hey Matt, be on the lookout for Avengers tickets. I'm thinking, okay, that's that's fine, that's cool. We could get th these tickets in a week or two, we don't have to like get them right away, right? But I was wrong. Um, within the next 24 hours, the tickets go live, and Aaron told me to call him right when they go live. So I could called this guy at 8 in the morning and of course I felt kind of awkward calling him so early I didn't want to wake well, him I up. Why you texted me I texted you. I texted you. That yeah. was it. Yeah. And when I texted you I was like man I, I didn't expect the tickets to go on pre-order so fast within like a 24 hour period of him <laughs> you know telling me to be on the lookout. Well it was because they were listed they just weren't on sale yet. Yeah. That's what yeah. It was. So it was kind of freaky and then we tried to find tickets and he, he had to go to work so I had to find a movie theater that still had tickets available. The first, our first option was completely shot. Within two minutes, the tickets were sold out. Yeah. So I find another place. He tries to go onto that website and on get tickets for this other theater. Those tickets are sold out too. And it was like the fourth theater, the theater that we've been going to for maybe like three years now. Those had some regular tickets, no XD, no IMAX. It was fine. He had to run in. He had to hustle into the theater, physically hustle in there, mm -hmm. get the tickets. And meanwhile, I'm still like an hour and a half away, just scratching my head like, man, I really just, I messed this one up. I messed this up. I could have just bought the tickets. I should have bought the tickets when I had the chance, you know? But, but in retrospect, it really worked out. It well. really did. So you saved us. Fine. You yeah. saved us. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'll try to get through this as fast as possible. Yeah. But yeah, about March 26th, that was the one month mark from the movie. I was like, and tickets weren't on sale. So I was like, they have to go on sale anytime now. So I was checking constantly for a week. Then April 1st was when I saw the listings, but they weren't actually purchasable yet. Yeah. And then, of course, that morning at 8.30, I got your text right as my alarm went off. <laughs> <laughs> and I got on my computer and everything was crashing. Every ticket website, every the app on my phone, they were all crashing. It took me like 20 minutes just to get to the point where I could figure out that the shows we were going to go to were sold out. And I was like, this is unbelievable. This is unreal. Yeah. And so, yeah. And like Matt said, I had to go to work and stuff. So I'm like at work trying to figure it out still. Yeah. And then uh, for my actual job, what ended up happening is I had to actually go to the mall, which is where the theater is at. And I was I had a moment there. I was like, and I called Matt. I'm like, dude, we just had to go to a first show. It doesn't really matter where it's at. And so he agreed. And 100%. then I went into the theater, got the physical tickets, put them in my wallet, came home that night, put them in my fire safe for a week. <laughs> and that's that's history. If his house burnt down, he'd still be able to go see this movie. Exactly. That was great. Oh, my God. All right. So I guess we should just so really yeah, jump into the it now. preparation for this movie was intense, not only from that perspective, but also just perspective of I was very fortunate. I did not see any spoilers before this movie, did not see him, did not hear him. I, uh, I was avoiding the comment section once I heard the spoilers are on the internet and then That's after awesome. and then even after that when the premiere happened I shut everything down. I shut down Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, 
YouTube. I like just stopped getting on the internet in general so for like three days, which was really interesting. You should try it sometime, see how long you last. <laughs> yeah, I, I was the, the lucky soul who saw leaked footage on Twitter out of all places yeah. on accident. I know, right? But I reported it, so. Yeah. So yeah, so the way I kind of like to do this is uh, we, uh, we like I like to give oh, my initial impressions of the film and then we'll do that. That'll be non-spoiler. We'll talk about just what we thought initially about the whole thing and then we'll get into the spoilers. So real quick, Avengers Endgame to me was just a fantastic conclusion to 11 years of a cinematic universe with much beloved characters and also 21 films later is the event of a generation and it was an absolutely phenomenal experience which I would not trade for anything. If I'm being completely honest I can't like top what Aaron said. All I can say is I cried during this movie because I started watching these movies when they first came out when with a uh, Iron Man, the first Iron Man when I was in sixth grade. 2008. 2008. I did the math. I was a freshman. Oh my gosh. <laughs> in sixth grade, I never thought 11 years later I'd be tearing up. Yeah. So much. There were so many tears. Uh, yeah, so I'm very thankful I got to see this opening night because it, it made me feel things differently and uh, really just moved me. So yeah, pretty and, happy about it. And those those were good or bad tears. I'll let the you yeah. figure that out. You need to experience <laughs> it yourself, and so that just stay off the internet if you have Absolutely. not seen it. If you have not seen this movie yet, stay off the internet. In fact, stay away from people you know that have seen it. Why are you watching this slash listening to this right now? If yeah. You have not <laughs> like, well, I mean, they can listen to the first part. It's right. the second part they can't right. listen to. But, but still, like, get off the internet. Yeah. Get off the like internet. I, said, I was super fortunate. I was probably like one of the few people that went into it completely cold, and I could have not have been more happy about yeah. that. Um, but yeah, and if you have seen the movie, you're on notice. Do not spoil it for anyone, all right? Yeah. Do not do that. Don't be that guy. No one likes that guy. And you get mugged, so don't do it. <laughs> All right, well, I yeah. guess it's time to just dissect this thing. <laughs> this three-hour uh, monster. Sweet. And before we get into th remember, three-hour movie. You must take preparations for this. Yes. All right? We took preparations, and we got through the whole thing. It was fine. Yeah. But you have to play your cards smart. So, like, no concessions. Go to the restroom right before the movie. Those kinds of things. Be smart about it, because you do not want to step out for a minute no. of this film. And it does start off relatively slow but the slow part eh, I can't even say it starts off slow <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> but there are slow parts of this movie that you cannot leave you no. know um, no, no. there's so much good information and so many good character buildups in this film that you can't just leave for five minutes because the Russos knew that they could make this three hours long and they could tell an entire narrative because they've earned it yeah you know the entire MCU has built up to this so just sit down for three hours like our grandparents did when they had to go see like Gone with the Wind or any of these other three hour long movies you can do it yeah although those had like intermissions yeah. this does not have an, an intermission at all so so be cautious of that. Don't uh, get too dehydrated yeah. beforehand and, and drink too much water. Yeah. Just have enough water. <laughs> just, just enough. Yes. Yeah. So. But yeah. So, so I guess before the spoilers, my final point, of course, is that like I've already seen it on the internet today. It's like that. This is the event of a generation. It's like that's so true. Like this is our generation's version of Star Wars. Like with our parents when the original Star Wars came out. Mm -hmm. Like that was their huge generational movie event and so i just think that's a really cool comparison like this yeah. is our generational event because it really yeah. is it's never been done before it's huge it's massive yeah and it is legendary i gotta say i think this was like the return of the jedi yeah and uh infinity war was empire exactly but i don't want to say what a new hope was because that might spoil my perception of the movie <laughs> but take you know just yeah all right, I think that's enough yeah. of that. All yeah. right, spoiler warning. You have been warned. Do not listen to this podcast Don't. or this video at any point from this point onward. You have been warned. Seriously, stop. Do, don't be like this guy and spoil a movie for himself. You know what? <laughs> I, okay, I'm going to... 
I'm gonna be completely honest, I saw some spoilers, some on my own, some completely by accident, most by accident. Yeah. And... But like, I'm just uh, saying, even with other movies, oh, it's, yeah. you spoil it for yourself. Mainly yeah. The Amazing Spider-Man 2, I went on my way because I was already irritated with that franchise. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I read the entire synopsis in nice. the summary of it, but... Um, this movie, even if like you hear spoilers, go see it. Don't think like, oh, it's ruined for me because you can't, there's no way to completely fathom yeah. what they do on Absolutely. screen. So, so yes. Yeah. So, spoiler warning. I don't want to hear anything about in the comments yep. about you spoiled the movie. You've been warned like exactly. ten times. I have All no right. sympathy for you. At exactly. This point. <laughs> so we're done talking nonsense. Let's talk about Avengers Endgame in theaters right now. Here we go. What did you think, Matt? I loved it. I cried. <laughs> or should we just collectively scream right now? <laughs> well, do we want to hurt hurt our ears? That's true. Let's and, not do that. <laughs> okay. Um. I did not expect no. Black Widow to die. I did not expect that, but it is inevitable. It is inevitable, but I did not expect it. Okay, I think, I don't know if it was like a diversion tactic to say <laughs> that she has her own movie coming out. Um, that completely threw me off. It can, you know, her movie can still be a prequel, but yeah. this, her death had meaning. It wasn't like a meaningless death. She proved herself and I was on the edge of my seat, literally. He saw it. Yeah. I was leaning forward like, you oh were. my gosh, I don't want to see either of these guys die. I don't want to see Hawkeye or Black Widow die. I know. But they died. Yeah. Well, I mean, Black Widow died, but. Yeah, just, Black Widow died. But yeah. yeah, again, just with that scene in general, it's like, as soon as like the plan was to get the soul stone, I'm like, oh. There's only one way that ends. Like, we already know how that goes, and the fact that they did it again was just, like, heartbreaking. It's like you're making me relive this moment again, and you're even playing the same soundtrack for that scene, which killed me last time. <laughs> my only issue, my only issue I have is, could they have gone back further before Gamora put the Soul Stone there? Or was the Soul Stone always... The Soul always... Stone was always there. She just... Found she out found where it. It was okay. Yeah, she found the map to the Soul Stone. Okay. Yeah, and that just—that's you know, good job to Natasha. Good job, Scarlett Johansson. Mm -hmm. um, performance of a lifetime. I teared up there. Yeah. So yeah, we but mentioned that's not the big one. We mentioned tears in this film. Um, like I, I got water in my eyes. Yeah, from that like, one. Yeah, teared up. And see, there's two kind. I have two kinds of tears. Me I too. Have, Tears of sadness and tears of joy. Me too. I had lots of each. So, like, by the end of the movie, I was teared out, bro. Like, I had, yeah. I had nothing left at the end. <laughs> by the end, oh, um, I mean, I don't know. I balled up a lot of my emotions till the very end. And the sixth grader inside me... Erupted. Erupted. I was sitting next to you, I know. <laughs> I guess I remember in sixth grade so vividly at the end of... Iron Man 1, when Robert Downey Jr. says, I am Iron Man. Oh, yeah. It's, like, I'm getting like, chills right now. And <laughs> and now we see him again saying, I am Iron Man. And doing the snap to save everybody. Oh, yeah. It was so good. Like, I'm still trying to get over that right now. I know. Like, <sighs> so it's really hard to think about anything yeah, else. Yeah, we're, we haven't, it hasn't even been 24 hours yet for no. us since we've seen this movie. So, like, we're still processing everything but yeah i think we just have to discuss that ending is the biggest moment of the film for sure like the final act of that film was just amazing the huge, whole yeah. thing was just incredible it was a huge payoff it I think. was you and know it explains the budget for this film <laughs> it really does i i just don't know where to go from here i really don't either <laughs> it's like that was it that's that was the end of every the last 11 years. It's just like, but at the same time, it's like, there's a lot more to life, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We need to actually just dissect yeah, that yeah, final scene. we need to figure scene. out how to move on. <laughs> how do we move on from that? I don't know. Well, I mean, Robert Downey Jr. is going to be fine. Like, he's, he, done, yeah. he's made a ton of money. He's yeah. great. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> That was the perfect end for him. I don't see yeah. how he he could have full otherwise. Circle. It, it came was very, full circle. It was beautiful. It like, was sad I, that he had to die. Like, like I, I'm super sad, but I can't be mad about it because they did it so well. Yeah. He sacrificed himself. Yeah. Very, very, very heroic. And that's why I think this generation's A New Hope is the first Iron Man. <laughs> and <laughs> because this is Tony Stark's story. Yeah. From the very beginning. Even when he's not in the movie, it's still his movie to me. 
Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know. And, like, yeah. So I said earlier, like, by the time we got to Tony Stark dying, like, I, I thought I was, like, at that point, like, I had nothing left in the tank as far as tears were concerned. I thought I had nothing left. And then they go to the funeral scene, and they put the, uh, old arc reactor back in there and i was like nope there it is it was like eked out like one more tear i'm like oh man. okay like i said i bottled up my tears most of my tears until tony died when yeah. he started dying and like i i started to realize what was happening mm -hmm. right after the the snap at the end i that's when i just it, they just started streaming down my face and you know i, I was recovering until i saw the yeah. old arc reactor the like as soon little. as him and dr strange looked at each other and dr strange was like one check one ch version of this we win yep. i was like oh <laughs> but it is totally in in tony stark's character to do that yeah it was believable he needed to uh, and, and, you know, he's made the sacrifice play before, like in the he first did. Avengers when he took the missile in the yep. space. Like, yep. so it is totally within his character to do something like that. How, he's my favorite character in the MCU. He was. <laughs> is. <laughs> so, yeah. But I guess moving forward. I, anyway, no, we won't talk about that yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I love that for his conclusion, he's, he's sitting next to uh, Pepper Potts and Peter Parker and everybody's by his side telling and, uh, him he's okay. Rhodey. And Rhodey, then his main crew who are letting him know that it is okay to rest. And I think that was a nice bit of closure for him to pass on. And uh, mm -hmm. it's still sad, but it is good to have his people with him, his his most valued, you know, his friends, his family. Um, just gave me chills and I got a lot of mixed emotions from it. All good though. It's good when a movie can execute something mm -hmm. so huge but make it so personal. Yeah, yeah. And like, yeah. And I, I like, you go to the first show of a movie like this for the fan experience. Yeah. And like, I've never experienced anything like this before in Me my neither. life. And I never will again, like, let's be honest. No. Just like half the theater was crying at the end of this film. I, you could like, hear it. You could, you could hear, hear it. People weeping. Yeah. I heard you weeping. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, yeah. I have never done that in a movie theater before. Like, it was just like, what is happening? I was literally sitting there like, what is happening? I'm like, what is happening on the screen? What is happening in this theater? What is happening in me? Yeah. <laughs> I texted everybody after saying, I just cried in the theater. <laughs> it's yeah. like that meme that you see online, why am I crying in the club right now? And it's that dude just like tears <laughs> down his face. That's how I felt. But yeah. I, I knew I knew why I was crying. So it was just it was dramatic and inspirational and just so many things. Honestly, I know they're not gonna do it, but the Academy should acknowledge Robert Downey Jr.'s performance in this. Oh yeah. I, I think he maybe gave the best performance in that movie, hands down. Yeah, Chris Evans did a great sure. job. They all did a fantastic did job. Great, yeah. It's just, it's you can't compare, but Tony Stark knew, I don't know, they were able to convey that Tony Stark was a man of, he was a complicated guy. He wasn't just a, you know, a good guy like Captain America. He's not just a, you know, goody two shoes or whatever. Yeah. You know, he is a guy who's had a complicated past and he has proven himself, proven himself as a hero, but he still has conflict. And he's not a, he's a human. He is a human character. And when we, and we, when we see him yelling at Captain America at the beginning, I'm like, he is, he's losing it. He's yeah. losing his, his morale. And I think it's good to see that, um, destruction of his morale at the beginning yeah. and seeing his well, redemption. Well, also the dude is like half starved. Exactly. But, <laughs> but like, it's nice to see him come out of it and still come out as the hero and save everybody. I yeah. just think that's a very inspiring character arc. Yeah, like, yeah, like, I'll, they wrapped up so many arcs in this film, just, like, in a good way. And they had to, I mean, let's be honest. Like, yeah. They couldn't leave anything out, out yeah. in the open. Like you um, said last night, too, like, it's it's a movie. It's not a comic book. You can't keep things going on and on. Yeah, yeah. I think we've both discussed this in the past, too. It's like, how are they going to end this series, you know? Because yeah. it is it is a different format than a comic book. Yeah, there had there had to be an end. Just like a TV show has to have an end to it. Like, yeah. This is like a TV show of movies. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Um, yeah, so Tony dying super dramatic, for sure. 
Yeah, so the other prominent character in this film is Captain America, uh, yeah. Steve Rogers. They had to bring his arc to a close as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had arguably the most epic moment in this film. That was This was like the theater erupted cheering moment. Never seen that before in my life either. Yeah. Like the, cr the crowd went insane yeah. it happened, when he got... It happened in Infinity War when Thor showed up yeah, at yeah. the end. It yeah. happened then. This is like that moment for this film. But amplified, I think, Yeah, a so bit like more. when... Freaking Captain America summons Mjolnir and Thor's like, I knew it. I knew <laughs> you it. Know? Yeah. And, and he's just like, you know, shield, Mjolnir, Thanos' face, you know. Yeah. That was such an epic moment. And of course, you know, and then, and then Thanos still like beats him down. And Thanos is a champ in this film. Like he doesn't even have the Infinity Stones and he's able to take so much punishment and deal so much punishment yeah. for the whole thing. It really speaks to how powerful he actually is. Yeah. Even without the stones, but more on that later. Mm. But like the, the great, the best shot in this entire movie was this moment when um, Thanos is like, yeah, I'm done with this nonsense. Because he's just like, you know, he was just fighting Thor, Iron Man, and Captain America initially. And then he just summons his entire army. He has his spaceship. He has the Black Order. And they're all there. And he's there. And then Captain America stands up. And he has a broke. He has his broken shield, and there's just that wide shot. Yeah. All of Thanos's army and just Captain America with like the sun coming yeah. in behind him. It is just the perfect shot for that movie, it, and I want yeah. that in a poster. It's a cinematic experience. Just that shot alone. It is. That That's a painting. The, that is a. That is a painting. It's. It's a picture. And I want it. It's <laughs> one frame out of a comic book. You know, it, it, it's like a, those two page yeah. frames, you know, like you're like, oh, it's the scene of the movie. Yeah. yeah. Well, that entire third act was the scene of this movie. Yeah. Like <laughs> that was so unexpected. Just having Thanos travel forward in time and just so much was unexpected nuking in the this. base. Yeah. And, like, yeah. Like, you know. Yeah, I was watching. I watched Infinity War the night before, and just like, uh, just like the roller coaster ride they take you on in that movie, they do it again in this one. Yeah, it's just like, oh man. Yeah, so I think the the big thing with Captain America, of course, is his conclusion. Um, at the very end of the movie, he takes the stones back in time, but then he doesn't come back. He then, he's sitting on that. He's bench. sitting on the bench, and he's like ninety years old or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, oh, wow, that was unexpected. But yeah, at the really same was. time, it wasn't. And it's, I love that callback when he, him and Bucky, he says goodbye to Bucky. He's like, don't do anything stupid until I get back. And he's like, you, don't worry, you're taking all the stupid with you. They yeah. flip that line from the first Avenger, which I really appreciated that moment between them. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, so, of course, uh, he went back and got that dance with Peggy in yep. 1945 or whatever and he's descended and he just stayed there and got his happy ending which is well it's, deserved it's perfect. it's perfect yeah and i couldn't be more happy about it and he gave the shield to sam wilson it was a perfect transition into the next saga of mcu movies you know it's a good conclusion for cap it's a good con conclusion for tony you know and we have so much to look forward to now but it's nice to see cap just get his life you know mm -hmm. he, he was able to battle for 10 years and then go back in time and be with the love of his life mm -hmm. yeah that's very satisfying very satisfying yeah. like it was like oh wow captain america's done now but it's like but you, you don't feel really sad about it i mean not at all you feel a little sad about it but it's like but you couldn't be happier for the way they chose to close his yeah. character arc either it's not like he left with uh much left to prove or much left to do yeah you know because thanos is dead um the universe the reality as we know it is saved and we have a big group of new avengers rising so it's not like the world is really left in peril yeah, you know? yeah. so i think it's perfect way to end and so I think yeah the main the main chunk of this movie is when they go back in time. Yeah. And that was such a funny moment just because you get to revisit all these little bits of history, MCU history. Yeah. And that was just so much fun. It was very unexpected, but it was also a whole lot of fun. How about that uh, that Star Lord bit where he, we, you know, the opening scene in yeah. the first Guardians movie? That was so funny. Where it's like the title pops up, and you have Star Lord just kind of dancing. 
That was like the iconic scene of the movie. Mm -hmm. We revisit that, and we have Rhodey with uh, Nebula. Yep. They're just like watching him like, is this really the guy? <laughs> or She's something like, like that. They're yeah. like, who is this guy? <laughs> and she just punches him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that was so funny. Because they like turned the music off, so he's just, it is just like what it actually looked like. It's just yeah. some dude just like singing to himself in this abandoned room. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, that was so funny. <laughs> Um, they really, compared to Infinity War, though, they really dialed down the humor. They did. Um, there's a, there, there are quips for sure, but overall, like, it either felt like they dialed it down or is the fact the movie was so much longer, there wasn't a whole lot of humor because it did feel like there's a lot of humor because it spread out more. I don't know if that's what it was, uh, yeah. but at the same time, it was still a lot. It was much. It was a much more serious movie. Yeah. So it did feel like they dialed down humor. It, yeah, I think it's partially because you know this is the final act in so many different series, and it's honestly pretty short. You know, it's it has to wrap up a lot of different things. So the humor, yeah, I think it was put on the back burner on purpose. They had to explain what happens within five years, you know, between the decimation or the snap and yeah the rest of the story and we have to learn so much that's transpired um it's dramatic and i think in order to keep that tension going they had to kind of drop the humor for a bit and there were like you said there were there were some moments of humor that were still pretty nice you know like uh banter or jokes between tony and rocket were, were pretty funny with yeah. uh tony calling rocket like a build a bear or something yeah. but that was kind of funny <laughs> Stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think, like, how extreme the plot was, there just was not time for humor. And I think that's okay. Yeah, it was fine. It was yeah. Really fine. Yeah. Um, Nebula was another character who, who had one of the most important roles, I think. She helped complete the story. You yeah. Know? And it's nice seeing her change from the first Guardians as a very tortured soul and become one of the heroes. Yeah. That's an amazing flip. And we've seen it done before, but it's nice to see that again, especially with her. She and we see her interact with her old self and with the with the old Gamora, you know, from twenty fourteen. Yeah. That was a very fascinating way to bring back Gamora, but also see how much progress Nebula has made. You know, just that whole whole dynamic was really fascinating yeah it was, it was really neat like mm -hmm. the two nebulas <laughs> yeah and yeah. she killed herself <laughs> yeah yeah i'm still trying to figure out how that works it's like shouldn't she have disappeared well with that logic though then you would have to say that a lot of these things should have like a lot that's of... true and they established that's not how this was gonna work yeah so, yeah that's true um i i gotta say at the beginning we see a lot of nebula's hum humanity or her her compassion for you know, for Tony Stark when, you know, Tony is basically starving to death and Nebula gives Tony back the food, yeah. you know. Um, those little things, I think, make Nebula that much more um, enjoyable. And Yeah, yeah. So... Um. Yeah, she had a good she had a good role and yeah, yeah and they brought Gamora back because they yeah. pulled her from back in time. Let's so talk about that. That's gonna be interesting. Let's, let's talk about for Gamora. Sure. Um, you know, I wasn't sure how they were gonna bring back Gamora, and part part of me wasn't sure that they that they even would. But once this this plot started to unfold, you know, it's like, is she gonna just be in present day? What's how is this gonna just yeah. happen? So we have a, a an old Gamora, or I, sh I should say, a younger Gamora. A new Gamora. A new Gamora. <laughs> the one who has no memory of the first Guardians movie or the second one. Yeah. No relationship to any any of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, it's gonna be wild. It set up already a lot of tension for Guardians three. Oh yeah. I'm excited for that movie. I think the most out of the next phase. Yeah, and you know they had to bring her back. I feel like. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that was it. Was a neat trick. It was a neat it was. trick for it was. sure. It was such a comic book scene too. Like seeing yeah. that. That's, this is such a comic book movie for seeing all these different twists and turns and. Yeah, and like, one really cool thing that they just really paid attention to is like during the time travel sequences, just like like just the accuracy to all going back to all these different scenes and all these different movies yeah uh, just like 
how true they were to the like the setup was just really incredible. It was, and they also I, they definitely just took some scenes from the old movies and just put them in there. Yeah, which was really cool that they did. But then like shooting them from the new new yeah. perspective, that yeah. was neat. That's a very good uh, skill, you know, that this movie showed that that the filmmakers have. Yeah, they're able to really replicate old scenes but bring something new to the table. Um, especially the Battle of New York. That was a pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, Thing with uh, Loki still doing Loki, you know, still being Loki, uh, and uh, they also I, explained the muzzle. <laughs> the muzzle, the muzzle. Thor slaps the muzzle on Loki. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. We didn't see them <laughs> yeah. do that in the original. In the original, he just had it. You know? Yeah. So yep. they explained that, which was nice. That was funny. Yeah. There's so much to talk about in this film. One thing I want to touch on is the beginning, because I think the beginning of this film is one thing everyone really kind of anticipated was going to happen based on the trailer. Yeah. We see that look Hawkeye gives in the trailer, and you just know. It, in your soul that his entire family's dead yeah so this film opens up with his entire family dying and you your heart breaks anyway even though you know it's coming your heart still breaks i i was tearing up at the beginning of this film yeah like, i heard someone a few rows back just like crying <gasps> already like, someone was like <gasps> I like know. they didn't expect it. I'm like, like, come on now. I know, but it was just like so surprised. It was so surprising. It was. Like, it was. And it was. it's like, oh, you thought you knew a film you were watching? <laughs> Let me remind you. Yeah. <laughs> like, snap. <laughs> it, it brought that sense of urgency to the film. Absolutely. You know, uh, I guess maybe for new viewers or mo or for movie viewers who haven't seen Infinity War in a, like a few months or so, it, it kind of re reminded people of how intense things yeah. have gotten. Um, yeah. Very good. Yeah. And I think I made some sort of prediction that Captain Marvel is going to save Tony in space. I don't you, know. You might have, I don't know yeah. if I was like on a recording or anything, but it's like I do remember. <laughs> Go back making, in the file. I know. <laughs> I do remember making that prediction. So it's like, hey, that paid off too, because that's she, yeah. what she did. Yeah, she had a smaller role, but I think her role her role was perfect for how big the film was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She she came in when she needed to. I liked her new. I think she had a new costume, right? Yeah, that's like you're saying. when they did the flash forward to mm -hmm. five years later, which, by the way, I did not expect them to do that. I like, didn't either. Five years is a long time. The five year jump. <laughs> Caught me off guard. Yeah. And I now like, I think we're both pretty intrigued with how they're going to yeah. explain just people re reappearing. You know, and that's, I think, why I'm so fascinated with Far From Home coming out in a few months now. Like, how yeah. are they going well, to explain like, everything? Society's going to be messed uh, yeah. for a long time because now you have the group of people who's been living with this horrible, horrible existence for five years. And now you have this group of people that it's five years later and they don't know what's happened other than the fact that they weren't there for five years. So yeah, makes Far From Home much more interesting. Yeah, and I'm, I'm going to be uh, intrigued with how they can, you know, propel Peter's relationships with his, with his friends, you know? Are they going to be like t five years older or th did they all get the snap? Who yeah. knows? Who knows? <laughs> well, we know two of them got snapped because yeah. they're the same age in the trailers. Yeah. Also, I love the group therapy session and we see one of the Rooster Brothers. Yep, yeah, that yeah. was funny. He did a really good job. I forget which one that is. I, I don't, don't remember which Russo it the, is. The Russo in, in the therapy session with uh, Cap and it was like a group therapy session. Mm -hmm. He did a really good job. Support I mean, group. Yeah, the support which group. Which we're all going to need by the way like yeah now yeah but, <laughs> but i gotta say like he he did a fantastic job i think as a director you you learn how to act of course because you're teaching actors how to yep. do the scene yep, but yep. It's, it's nice to see directors in their own movies you know tarantino does it but i think the russo bro here i think he did a good job yeah yeah no, just... <laughs> speaking of the whole five years later thing is like ant-man shows up and now his daughter's like you know five years yeah. older and she's like a teenager and you're like what <laughs> who would have thought you know That's five so years ago i mean i guess we all kind of thought figured like five years ago when the first ant-man came out that ant-man would be the one to save the day yeah in some sense but he really is the, one of the heroes in this yeah. movie <laughs> yeah that was yeah ant-man's contribution was quite it, funny fun especially because yeah. you know like they had that that scene at the end of ant-man and the wasp which really just set up what's gonna happen yeah yeah and so yeah he just what a rat like flips the switch and he yeah. comes out of the quantum realm yeah. five years later and it was really interesting it's like destiny just knew <laughs> yeah so that was that was really funny for him and i love they had the horn in the van still yeah yeah that was <laughs> like, funny. does anyone see the van it's like and it plays the horn yeah it's like, oh there it is <laughs> see 
the, the Russo brothers, not even just the Russo brothers, but the, the writers, Kevin Feige, they all did a good job bringing these little details to the film that, mm -hmm. like, a lot of people just wouldn't expect to be in it, you know? Like, that's mastery to me. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> like, so many little things that... There are so many little things that they brought back that she just really appreciated. And, and, like, you know, at one point, Cap and Iron Man go back to 1970, and that Tony talks to his dad real quick, which is really awesome. This was, like... Like a full, that entire scene was just yeah. some, a bit of closure for Tony. And also it was interesting because he kind of got to see what his father was like. Yeah. And I felt like he didn't really want to be like his dad at that. Like he, he got to see who his dad was, you know, mm -hmm. at least from my perspective, it was like he was seeing him who we for what he was um, around the same age as Tony in the movie. I think it was kind of sad, but also it, it opened up Tony's eyes to see like, okay, this guy is not perfect, but he was able to at least relate to him a little bit. And I guess get some closure before Tony has to go out and save the world. So yeah, um, for real. For I, real. I'd like, I need to see it again to really say more about it, but that scene was very important. Yeah. Just for a, on a personal note for Tony. And Thor got one, too, because he, like, ran into his mom yeah, in yeah. Asgard. And mm -hmm. it's really funny because she's like, you're from the future, aren't you? He's like, no, I'm not from the future. Yeah, I'm from the future. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he just, like, breaks down. But Yeah. It was good. It was a heartfelt moment. Also, I was kind of shocked that they had Natalie Portman return for her <laughs> one scene which but, she didn't say anything. Yeah. But she she came back for one moment so Rocket to, could jack the uh, reality stone from her. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you know what? Fine. It's, I, it's fine. It was nice seeing Natalie Portman. Like, I never thought we'd see her again. I know, right? That so, was surprising. So many things like that. You don't expect to see these characters again for a while. But oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. So yeah. there's a lot. Oh, Hulk. Oh, God. Hulk. Or Bruce Banner, or yep, both. So both. it's like, it's like Hulk Banner. We have Hulk we have Banner. Hulk Banner in here, who Smart Hulk. who is just who figured out how to become Bruce Banner, or how Bruce Banner be ah, Bruce Banner <laughs> figured out how to become the Hulk, but use his Hulkness and his brains to become one person. Yeah, that was so weird. But it was really strange. It's very strange. They didn't have any of that in the trailers. They, I know. They did a good job. It was job so with strange. That. But it was like, it was all cool. right. It's funny. It, it was definitely <laughs> funny. Right. But it, it showed that Bruce Banner became like this hot shot with all these kids, you know. Um, he has to like give signatures out at this yep. diner. Yeah. And it was cool because he had the smarts, but also like the bronze or, you know, yep. the, the looks now. It was just kind of funny. Um, strange, but we saw a, a different. He wasn't really the Hulk. He wasn't really Bruce Banner. He was like his own person. Mm -hmm. I loved it. It, yeah. was, it was different. It was very different. Um, he kind of, for that reason, he kind of reminds me of the Avengers equivalent of Beast in X Men. <laughs> you know, just for that, because you know, Beast was of course a human who kind of has a mutation. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But still has the smarts. Different, but yeah. similar. Um, one thing I was kind of wondering about this morning was, um, how do you think that fight would have gone if Thor was actually in his prime still? Because Thor let himself go yeah, quite a bit. Yeah, but he yeah. still put up a good fight. But I was just wondering, what if he was still like in his prime self? Like That would have been epic, Excuse probably. Me. It would have been epic. Um, I wish we could have seen that. I guess that's one disappointment I had. Yeah. <laughs> But, it, but from another perspective, it was nice to see Thor become, you know, this just this out of shape guy, this defeated character and see yeah. him transform. You know, um, we saw his character grow and change. And by the end, he was uplifted again. And But he's a different person than he was even a movie ago. Yeah, I think that's nice to see. I think Thor has had a very all over the place kind of transition. Mm -hmm. He's He's changed so much from the first Thor movie. But the third one, he was like... He was like a prime, like, yeah. he, you know, this this guy is just a, he's the star, you know, and he has the looks, he has the power, and in this movie we see him at his lowest point. Yeah. Playing, you know, messing with guys on PlayStation or on they, Fortnite. Fortnite. Oh, yeah. With his old buddies from Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. That was nice. Yeah. They brought Valkyrie back, which was They fun. did. Yeah. I like that. And, and, the, and Thor made her. Made her. Uh, queen yeah. i guess yeah, yeah which makes sense and yeah because yeah and you know you had to expect that they were going to resettle on earth yeah and they did that and that was cool 
but how, how in the world were we able to get so much like story you know and so many different characters yeah. are able to build on to stories you know i feel like that's a problem a weakness other movies have you know they just mm -hmm. have try to cram so much into one movie but marvel has has done such a an incredible job with this experience this experiment yeah you know um i don't know i know somebody online said it can this can never be done again i just think it's opened up more doors for people to become more ambitious mm -hmm. it'll never be done again the same exact way you're on notice dc <laughs> yeah um they're, re they're they're definitely recoursing yeah. i don't really care about dc right now yeah um, sorry. That's fine. Yeah. But with Thor, um, I think it just really opens the door for Guardians of the Galaxy being As, really interesting because now we have Guardians. like As old Guardians. Gamora and now we have Thor it's presumably it's going to be in that one because he left with the Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Um, very intrigued for that. Very interesting if they'll follow up on that or not, you know? I, I, I hope they do. I hope they can get Chris Hemsworth to stay on board. Well, he said, he's, he's, he's actually said that he'd be down for playing the continuing to play that character so all right well I, i'm gonna take that as a yes <laughs> and we're gonna get as guardians you know as guardians of the galaxy as <laughs> remember, guardians remember of the galaxy. he said that at the end he's like the as guardians of the galaxy <laughs> it's like no no we know who's in charge on this ship yeah, i loved it <laughs> like him and chris pratt oh my gosh who's the better chris Oh, oh. <laughs> there's going to be wars. Oh, I, I loved it. And we Nebula is back with the crew now. Yeah. She's one of the crew. Yeah. And when <laughs> her just little, she's still dark, you know, she has like that dark sense to her. But it was nice when she was like, you guys should use knives. And she her head's like down, you yeah. know, she looks evil-ish, but she's still... We know she's. It's coming from a good place and just a mm -hmm. place of misunderstanding. Absolutely. Guardians three, dude. I. I'm excited. Very excited. I'm glad they're doing it. Me too. Just not as soon as I would have liked. But maybe, maybe it it will be a bigger payoff. You know. Yeah. Um, but they have their time. They can take their time making yeah. it good. And so. one thing, we, the other epic moment we forgot to mention was um, during the final battle when everyone's started showing up at the end there yeah and captain america finally got to say his line avengers assemble i was so happy no, no, the, it was the, the theater cheered it, it was avengers <laughs> grabs the hammer <laughs> assemble yeah it is so epic how could you top that yeah like that's what you need in this movie this is a movie that needs those moments yeah this is like the epitome of what comic book movie yeah is. like you had wizards you had wakanda you had asgard um you had all the avengers like every single one Everyone. of them it, this movie had yes. every single like good guy and a lot of bad guys from all the previous movies we mm -hmm. had the red skull back i wish we could see the red skull and captain america kind of interact again but that's never gonna happen that's now. never gonna happen but now. it's fine it's fine i don't yeah. I wish, ah, man, I don't know. I, it, it's those little things that you wish that you could, you know, Cap could have known. Yeah. Like, and just see his expression, like, oh my gosh, you know, but. Yeah, it's fine. So, do you think the Hulk could carry his own movie at this point? Yes. Let me explain why. Okay. I, it's just a <laughs> random thought yeah. I just had, because, you, know, you know, he's never been in a movie by himself since the 2008 one. Yeah. Which I liked. Yeah, I don't hate it. Right. But it wasn't, you know, it wasn't yeah. amazing. It was nice, but, you know. Yeah. Um, I think that Bruce Banner could do a lot with trying to maintain himself now. Because even since that first Incredible Hulk movie, it was about maintaining himself and, and staying, you know, he was trying to keep his heart rate down so yeah. he wouldn't turn. But then it became, how can he channel the Hulk and make the Hulk work for him? And then we see the Hulk, you know, have his own personality and everything. And now they're merged into one being. Yeah. What they could do is just, you know, have them still battle and maybe shift around a bit. I don't know. They yeah. could do a lot with him transforming. Yeah. I, I think, honestly, the only way to go from here is more Hulks. Yeah. Uh, there has to be more. And they already have Red Hulk set up. They do? Yeah. General Ross becomes Red Hulk. Oh, really? I didn't yeah, know that. He does, eventually. They could totally do it. You know, they could also have Banner and Hulk split apart. That's like, been done, too. Yes. that They did that back in the... Uh, 
the 90s uh, I almost animation. Thought, I almost thought they were going to do that when uh, the Sorcerer Supreme, Tilda Swinton, when she Yeah, me hit. too. Yeah, I, I thought, remember. I, I think thought I, that yeah. was going to happen. I thought we were going to have Berserk Hulk for a second. I think like, I saw you, yeah. I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> was, yeah. But they didn't. I was like, all right, that's fine. But at the same time, like, that could have been cool. <laughs> been cool. I still think they could do that. That they'd have to do, you know, splitting them apart, and then maybe like a Red Hulk movie. Maybe they could find a cool way to do it together if they don't want to do like ten Hulk movies. Yeah. Because that I think they want to move on. There's a lot of Hulks. There's yeah. a lot. There's like five. Well, or it's good. Six. Yes, it's good that we still have Hulk in the universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, he can, you know, he can sit down for a while, and they could bring him back later. Yeah. The only characters they cannot bring back are Cap and Iron Man. And, Unless and Black Widow. and Black Widow. Well, she might still be getting this movie. Well, yeah, but Who she knows? can't come back in the current right timeline. exactly. Unless they like do some more stuff with like the Reality Stone and really mess things up. <laughs> but I don't see them doing that. They what did they do with the stones? Oh, all right, they put them back where they in yes. The time they I think them. yeah. The biggest confusion. He also had to take Mjolnir back. <laughs> yeah, he did. He, he did. He didn't catch that. I did. Yeah. I loved it when two things about Thor. Just because I really like him. Um, a, really glad he did actually get to kill Thanos. Me too. Chopped in a his very head off. brutal he way. It was awesome. He chopped off his hand first yeah. and then his head. And then also when he did go back in time to Asgard, I loved it when he summoned Mjolnir. He's like, ha, still worthy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I think that was just a little morale boost he needed. Yeah. That and talking to his mom, of course. Yeah. Which was really huge. These these stones though. The, I was very. It was cool to see them explain um, how the soul stone, how not just the soul stone, but all the stones work. Yeah. Um, we see. I forget that sorcerer's name. What's She's her name? just the sorcerer supreme. Sorcerer That's her name. supreme. Yeah, she explains everything, and it, it's cool to, like I said earlier, to see old characters come back and yeah, yeah, yeah. be important to the plot. Um, the, that's yeah. so interesting. She was when he's like, "I'm looking for Doctor Strange," and she's like, "You're five years too early." Yeah, it's like yeah. she already yeah. knew yeah. what was going to happen. That was so sick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it was cool that she was able to, of course, then look further into the future and see, okay, yes, we need to get. I need to give you this time stone. Um, so it was cool. I also liked the fight between Captain America and Captain America. That was also cool. <laughs> that was funny. Um, and I like when uh, Tony, the old Tony, gives uh, you know him and Ant Man find a way to give younger Tony a heart attack. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was really crazy too. And, and then uh, Thor uses his hammer to like yep. bring Tony back to life for a second or whatever. Yeah, that, yeah, just all this stuff they are doing going back in time. Uh, I was really surprised they got Robert Redford back actually. Yeah. As well. Yeah, yeah, that was good. I liked it. There's a lot of there. There's just a lot of cool things. I will say, like, there were points where it kind of dragged out. Um, the the plot did drag out, or at least the story dragged out a little bit. But it was overall needed to be a little slow at times because yeah. there's so much that needed to be said and developed. Not to mention how it ended. Like, yeah. So we needed that slow bit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, be, just because a movie is slow does not mean it's bad. I think that's a problem that a lot of critics have these days is it needs to be like well paced. They mean it needs to be keep their attention. Mm -hmm. But like if you you got to be able to sit through some dialogue and like a slow burn. So I think that's what was needed in this just to make that big payoff in the third act, you know. Yeah. Um so it, I'd give it, you know, I have my own rating system, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give it like a 4.5. Man, a 4.7 out of five for me i'd so. say it's really darn good yeah i i legendary I, I feel like it's hard for me to give it a five out of five but i don't know why i don't know like I, it's one of those things like my first impressions 4.7 out of five i need to wait like another week before Absolutely. i can really like you might want to wait a week after you see this yeah because i like we're still processing. Yeah, there's day. a lot that we haven't even mentioned that happens. I know. It's so much happens. So many. Oh. It's a roller coaster ride, man. Do we want to talk about uh, Tony's daughter and Pepper? So, yeah, Tony has a family. That was really cool. It was surprising to see Tony has a daughter and he's basically married to Pepper. Yeah. He is married. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They're, they're married. They're in the woods. They have a new place and they're living their lives. Yep. It's cool. I think it was nice to see their daughter, Pepper and Tony's daughter, have some of like their their humor. Where is it? Morgan? Mm -hmm. 
yeah, to see Morgan have some of their humor and their sassiness, because um, that's definitely a Stark. So, mm -hmm. also, I don't know, just uh, they're they did a good job just giving enough time to Tony to grow grow an attachment to his daughter and show yeah. that on screen. So, I, I for a minute I was like, they're not really giving a lot of time for him to talk to Pepper, but then I'm, but then I'm like, he's had so many movies to already develop his relationship with yeah, Pepper yeah, Potts, yeah. so now it's time for him to develop that relationship <laughs> yeah. with his and daughter. And he gave her a super suit. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. That was a good progression in Pepper Potts' character. We saw her be an awesome superhero in Iron Man 3 for a minute, but then nothing else came from it, mm -hmm. you know? Until, of course, this movie, which is great. Yeah. Loved her suit. It was, it was great, yeah, yeah. man. Ah, uh, so... Yeah, so many things happen in this film. Um, it's definitely worth a second or third viewing. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. just like, like I said, it's just like, it. you got to plan ahead. It's just like, because it's, it's three hours long, it's going to be so popular for like the next few weeks. You just got to plan ahead, man. And yeah. when you go back for those additional viewings and also just like taking time to process it the first time, probably even the second time, because... It's just so much happening. There's so yeah. much going on. I'll cry again. I know I'm gonna cry again. I know, I me too. It. Like that's I, why I, I can't see it again for a that's while. That's what happened when I saw you know? Infinity War. I, you know, I went back and saw it. Still ended up crying. You know. I did not cry during Infinity War. I didn't until um, Spider Man. Yes, yeah, Spider Man. I got teary eyed. Yeah. Um, I gotta. You know, we're going back to the, the <laughs> ending here of uh, End Game, or at least I'm going back to the ending of that movie. Yeah. Because. When we see Peter come to Tony Stark's side, yeah. like to his to his aid, and we see Peter in you know Tony's shoes in Infinity War, and seeing Peter watch you know somebody he loves die, mm -hmm. um, that's gonna be a big big uh, internal demon of Peter's going forward. Yeah, well, yeah, and this, perfect because they had this whole father-son relationship going yeah which is really good and yeah and now he doesn't have that and it's so sad yeah absolutely it's oh, terrible yeah. but it's a nice parallel yeah. and it's a, they showed yeah. them both in those yeah. each other's shoes yeah. um, and i don't remember if i mentioned it, it's just like i love that funeral scene oh i, I know we, just, yeah when a, everyone's there and they just like pan through everyone <laughs> yeah and yeah. stuff and then we get a little bit with uh John Favreau, yeah, and Morgan at the end. That was, was nice. nice. That was very I, nice. Who was that random kid though? Was that the kid from Iron Man Three? I don't think it was. Who is that? I kid? I don't know who the. If you know who that random kid at the funeral was, let us know. <laughs> it's got to be him, right? Like, but why would it be? I don't. I have no clue. It was so wonder, random. Who could it? I'm trying to think. Who? It ha It has to be. Does who el it? who uh, doesn't have to be? It could just be a random kid, I guess. <laughs> or it could be like Nova. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, except Gamora wasn't there. Yeah, well, yeah, Gamora... But she didn't... She disappeared. She, yeah. She, she disappeared. She, she was doesn't out need of there. to be, though, because she doesn't know who any of these exactly. people are. So. She's, that's that's the conflict for Guardians 3, yeah. as far as we know. Yeah. Um. So, so yeah, that, that makes be sense. interesting. But. Yeah. I loved the credits. I loved what they did with the credits because they like they did like the fancy credits for like all the uh, like secondary characters first. first, yeah, and then all the main characters had a, their own sequence and like they had like their signatures, yeah. on the yeah. screen. That was so dope and that was amazing. And then what about the the ending? We, then, we all thought there was going to be a, an end credit scene. There was not, but directly but end credit scene. We got an indirect. We got end credit scene. We heard a hammer hitting metal. Yeah, just hammer like, strikes. Yeah, hammer strikes. And uh, just like there's in, theories, uh, the cave. there's going to be theories. But I like to think it was an homage to the first Iron Man when he's in the cave building the Mark One. Me too. Um, That's what it sounded like. That's what I think it is. It is. That's what I'm gonna roll with <laughs> until yeah. I hear otherwise. Right. I'm I, I'm in no place to theorize about the future besides yeah. <laughs> I, I mean The Last Jedi taught me a lot to not <laughs> get my hopes up for any one thing to happen. And this movie subverted my expectations like I wanted The Last Jedi to. So <laughs> I'll say that. I mean, um 
Yeah. But at the, at the same time, I don't have any expectations for the future. I'm just very happy we got a good movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and an epic film. Very. This is top five. This is the magnum five. opus yeah. to <laughs> the Russo brothers. <laughs> yeah. Where does where this rank in your... Do you know yet where this ranks in your movies? Like your top 10 list or your top 15, 20? What, top like 100? all time? Or like superhero movies. Oh, I don't even have a list. <laughs> I I think I do. I, I made think it, you do. I, I made it this morning when I was <laughs> texting my friend about it. <laughs> I mean, I feel like while this movie stands on its own, I feel like you have to include it with Infinity War. You do? Oh, yeah. This didn't feel like it was a... Like its own movie that felt like it was connected too heavily and not too heavily but just very heavily with infinity war yeah. um yeah. which is fine yeah and please tell me you did not see this without seeing any of the other films yeah then why are you what are you doing <laughs> netflix has infinity war it has a lot it of, has a lot of marvel movies has a lot of them. <laughs> it has like all the main ones yeah so and then you can like rent the other ones or just it's like it's i don't know like, Find like a box, like even, five dollar like, bin. Can you imagine seeing this without seeing Infinity War? You'd be so confused. It'd be so confusing. And it's, why would you do that? Why would you do that? Why would you do that? <laughs> I wonder how the box office is, is gonna. I am very this. intrigued about the box office. I'm usually it's not. Be huge. I'm usually not. You know, like it's in, it's always interesting. It well, is always. It, it is always interesting. I, I actually like, always care, yeah, but I, I guess yeah. I, I guess I, I care I'm more. Very I, I care more this time around. Like. I, the past few years, I've been like, okay, they're going to make a billion dollars. This, I don't, I, I'm anticipating it to come close to setting a bunch of records, um, if not surpassing Avatar. I hope it does. I don't I know if it'll... I don't, I don't know if it will, because it doesn't have, like, that mass, uh, the yeah. general audience. I don't know. Feel. Yeah, it could be interesting. I mean, so you're talking lifetime gross, will it be yeah. Avatar? Yeah. That is a good question. Yeah. That number is astronomical. Yeah, it's, it's over No two. one's even come close. No. So. And the, the only reason Avatar did is because it is, like I said, it's like a, for a general audience, but it's the beginning. It's the beginning of a series, and it's James James Cameron. Well, and it was shot for 3D. It yeah. Rev, it revolutionary. And it, 3D. And 3D is more expensive than a regular 2D. Like, yeah. you have to see these movies. Or Very you can true. see it that in is true. IMAX and stuff. So that's another thing, and I think... You know, it, it's kind of cheating when you have to re-release your movie to, like, set a record. But, you know, if I were in James Cameron's shoes, I'd do the same. So, <laughs> I mean, what's what's a more, what, yeah, I mean, $1 billion? He's probably still more. living off that Avatar money. Like, oh, yeah. Come on. <laughs> and I, yeah, man. I, and I, that no. movie was okay. Anyways, we're talking Avengers. Yes, we are. Um, Still. Yes. Still. We will be. Yes. For the next year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I, I mean, I know I didn't want, I don't have any expectations for the future, but I do, I, I do have some, like, you know, with Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, yeah. Um, as far as everything else goes, you know, we're at a really uh, an interesting book, place. Dude. Yeah. It's an open comic book at this point. Yeah, what do you think, uh, do you have any, any idea? <laughs> I have no Excuse expectations. Me. I have no expectations for this film. I have no expectations moving forward. No, I, I told, except yeah. for my hypothesis is about Guardians Three. That's me too. It. Yeah, and Spider Man. Yeah, because we know those are the only two we know are coming, so we yeah. can't really discuss anything else. Yeah, they're making. Uh, I think it's already kind of confirmed that they're. It is confirmed they're doing Black Panther Two, Doctor Strange Two. But uh, the, the the other thing we have to factor in here is. Um, all the Disney Plus stuff. They're going to be doing all this special yeah. series on Disney Plus. So it'll be interesting to see how those r work. It will be very fascinating. Within the uh, story arcs that they yeah. have. Yeah. Um, who knows? It's an, yeah, like you said, it's it's an open canvas now. Yeah. You know, they could do whatever they want. Um, it's a good entryway for maybe new viewers. But I think that you're missing out if you're going to wait another year to really get started. Mm. So just watch what you got. We have you. You don't have to watch every one of these movies. I don't think. Just just buy the collection when it comes out. Two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. All know. right. Well, yeah. I'm sure we missed stuff. Yeah. I'm sure we missed plenty of things to talk about. Yeah. We'll be talking about this for weeks to come. Yes. But it's still a super enjoyable experience. 
Um, wouldn't have done it any other way with nobody else. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that is it for this review, I think. Um, yes. It was a phenomenal movie. Definitely one of the top films of the year. Easily. And uh, it was quite a ride. Thank you, Marvel. Thank you, yes, Disney. Thank you. Thank you, Russos. Thank you, Robert Downey Jr. Thank you, Stanley. All the actors, writers involved, producers, Kevin Feige. Yep. Uh, all the comic book creators of years past, present, future. Um, just all the fan and the fan base, too, for making yep. this a dream come true for everybody else. So, um, yeah. So, I think we're wrapping this up. Yep. Do you, do you have any tags you yeah. want to give? Yeah. So, like we said earlier, um, I have a YouTube channel, Matthew Triola. If you're on YouTube, you're already watching this. My buddy Aaron here, he also has a podcast on Apple Music. And what else, if you want to say your stuff yeah, again. Yeah, you can catch my podcast, Cinema Central, on Google and iTunes. And you can also find me on the socials at Ace Cinema Central. That's Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Yes, all my socials are Matthew Triola. So if you need to find me, that's how you can do it. Thank you guys for watching again, as always. Please make Thanks sure you give this- for listening, too. Yes, yes. Give this a, uh, a thumbs up. And subscribe. And subscribe. Leave a comment if you like what we have to say. You know, if you agree with us, let us know. If you disagree with us, let us know. Let's talk about it, okay? Absolutely. This is a support group now. So and pretty much. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys again. And don't spoil it for anyone else. Yes. <laughs> okay. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Boom. Wow. Incredible. <laughs>